Looks pretty big. I don't know. <laughs> the uh, the big six by six that I had on camera in here was actually here on night of the fifteenth on this scrape you actually a doe had come through and then he was right behind her two minutes and he stopped and pawed at the scrape and didn't get a real good look at him but enough to know that it's a pretty substantial deer so <laughs> alrighty you just look like a real sexy beast in your helmet oh yeah you know what else is sexy following the law Yep. <laughs> He's a, he's a big old mature buck. Whether he scores 140 or 160, I don't even care. I wasn't even looking for that. I knew that as soon as he walked in, I seen that points, so my safety come off and I was, <laughs> <laughs> he was in trouble. <laughs> that was so cool. He came so close to us. <laughs> he didn't even have any idea we were here. He just walked on by like it's just another day. Dana, I was kind of looking forward to hunting with you for more than a day. Now what? Now what do we do? Oh, that was a shot and a half. That was a, quite a shot. That was damn near 400 yards. Throughout the course of a fall hunting season, I find myself traveling throughout the province and sometimes throughout the country, chasing as many different species as possible. With only three months to try and film the majority of our 10 episodes each year, there's rarely time for a break. In fact, from late August until the end of October, I'm lucky to spend three or four nights in my own bed at home. For the most part, I live out of my suitcase while spending time in the camper, hotels, and of course the deluxe wall tent. Any day that we're not hunting, we're traveling to a new location, and I'll admit that it gets extremely exhausting. As the end of October rolls around each year, I'm usually wrapping up some mule deer hunts down south before finally heading home for good. But as nice as it is to be able to sleep in my own bed, the month of November is perhaps the toughest one of them all. Already beaten down and worn out, we have to drag ourselves into the bush every morning before the sun rises and sit in the blistering cold for nine hours before coming home and repeating it. Eventually, the days all blur together and we do whatever is necessary to stay warm and awake in the tree stand. Sometimes, it takes us all months to cross paths with the one specific deer that we're after. Do you have them there? But sometimes, we'll get lucky, and it happens on the first day.
It was our first day white doll hunting. It's so warm out here compared to when we usually white doll hunt. Which is super nice. Don't have to wear as many clothes. It was way easier to crawl into the heater bodysuit. We got some snow this morning though. The roads were pretty snow, snow covered and slick this morning driving here. And we got a brand new tree stand here, so that's why I'm using the tape. These shooting rails come and they're, they're too low, so I'm putting some under, some tape balls under the little space there, and then it's perfect height for shooting. We're kind of set up on a, a line here, so we can see quite a ways in each direction. And this is actually a brand new spot. We have never hunted this area before. Um, Dana started scouting it a little bit last year and quite heavily in the last week or so here. Um, and there's a ton of sign. We have a ton of pictures of deer, new deer that we've never seen because we've never hunted here. And it's actually really crazy because um, a lot of the deer here in this new area we're hunting um, have really cool genetics. We got some drop tines and stickers, and we got a six by six deer here. So we got a ton of new deer that are target deer this year, which is nice to have. Um, the other area that we hunt a lot is hard to get to right now. It's, well, it's only November 2nd today. So um, the ground just started freezing and a lot of the mud holes are pretty wet still and stuff. So we're gonna give it a shot and Hopefully something walks out here. Well, I'm gonna watch behind me here. And Dana's gonna watch that way. And hopefully if something walks out, it's just going about its day and not crossing a line, which it should be at this time of year because it's not like chasing a doe or anything like that yet. Shouldn't be, so. Never know. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Vortex Optics, Wood Wheaton Super Center, Covert Scouting Cameras, Old Smokes Coffee, Black Widow Innovations, and the MD of Bonneville. This segment of the show is brought to you by Deluxe Wall Tents, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. That actually looks farther than that, but it's only 160 yards that way. Or I can shoot the other way. Way further, probably double almost. to see this scrape right there opened up because it just snowed this morning and it's actually one of the best times to hunt scrapes we found anyways because they like to hit them up not long after the snowfall because they they want to keep them open and stuff so it's nice to see that that one's opened up there can't really see any other ones on the line here there is another one i can't see it but we can see this close Ready? 
was quartering like pretty far, so. No, you got him. Did I? Yeah, he's dead. Oh my God. Where did he come from? I was just watching down here. He must have come from here. No. Where was he coming from then? When I looked, he was standing right on the line. Right in the low spot, right on the line. Okay, well, I haven't been watching. I've been like looking farther. He must have came in this low spot here. I heard something walking. I could have swore for a while, but. <laughs> We've been sitting in tree stand for like three hours. I can't believe, because I was actually like watching there, Dana, but I was like watching more like further. No, I looked back and he was standing like 40 yards. Yeah, but I wasn't looking right there at the time you said that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we just went away till the first day out. I just don't even know how that happened. He had to have come from that low spot where I couldn't see because I was watching down the line over in that direction and then of course Dana spotted him. <laughs> Made it look like I can't see anything. I literally, I stood up, turned around to stretch my legs and he was standing right in front of you at 50 yards <laughs> on the line. I thought you were sleeping, that's why I yelled at you, because I was like, come on, really? Oh yeah, here's a scrape. Maybe that's where he was going to walk. Yeah, he definitely looks like a bush steer. Oh, look at this, He's, he has his main beam broke off. Yes, he has really long beams. I can't believe this. If this one was the same as this one, I bet it was a good two and a half inches broke off there. Beautiful five by five. Gorgeous deer. On the first day of white hunting. I can't believe that. His antlers are full of sap. Just full of sap. You can smell it even on him. I think this is the earliest we've ever shot a white tail, like for November white tails. And just a beautiful deer. Yeah, for sure, like hunting bush white tails. I think this is definitely the earliest. Look at that G3 though. It's just huge. Like it even has like nice mass and everything. It carries nice right through even this G4 here. Or yeah, this is the G4. I had to think about that for a second. Yeah, just like really nice antler. It's too bad he broke off his main beam here because who knows? It was probably, probably out to here at least. But yeah, just nice. All nice points here. Brow tine, all of them. They're just, they're really nice. He's just, a, he's an overall really nice deer. Like a really nice old mature buck. Exactly. Heavy bush buck. Exactly what we're after every year. You just look like a real sexy beast in your helmet. Oh yeah. You know what else is sexy? Following the law. Yep. <laughs> Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Mad Ramps, Deluxe Wall Tents, Victory Archery, Top Notch Taxidermy Studio, Federal Premium Ammunition, High Mountain Seasoning, Eye Hunter, and Arkin RV. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. In all of the years that Darcy and I have hunted whitetails, neither of us had ever killed a deer so early in the first day of our season. With her being tagged out, it gave me the opportunity to chase after a couple of the other big old bucks that we had living in different areas of the bush.
My heart had been set on the heavy old drop tie deer since the moment I first got a picture of him, and I was committed to spending as much time as possible in that area until he walked by. It was early into the first day sitting in those stands when a beautiful young buck came cruising past. With a split G2 and second brow tine, he's the kind of deer that you hope survives another season or two. With the sun heating things up and not much for activity going on, our morning was interrupted by a surprise phone call from Corey. Hello. How's it going? Oh, not bad, you? Not bad, what have you guys been seeing? Uh, just that one buck came through. One that you rattled in or what? Yeah, just this morning. Oh, that's good, hopefully uh, you guys got some time to come give me a hand. <laughs> <laughs> you got one? The old non typical's dead. Well, that's definitely the deer that I've been after. He's not the great big one that's in this area here, but he's the one that I've been after for since last year. He's got that real weird one side and the other side is uh, big non-typical points and stuff on him. He's a real cool deer. Very, very hard to pass him up, but I'm pretty sure he's down over there. <laughs> pictures of him, all kinds of pictures of him last year and this year and stuff like so. And it's the first day in the tree stand but <laughs> I'm done, which is kind of unbelievable actually. Darcy killed one the first day that she was in the stand this year. Dana's out there right now hunting, but uh, I can't pass this deer up. Like there's just no way. He's so cool. Oh, it's good. Trying to get out of this tree stand. <sighs> I'm pretty sure he's dead. Hopefully he is. I think I seen him go down over there. Just trying to get out of this heater bodysuit and uh, make my way down over there. This segment of the show is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. This segment of the show is brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. Jeez. That's hard not to shoot him. <laughs> oh, that thing's way cooler in person. Way cooler than the trail cam pictures, isn't it? Oh, look at the beams on him. Yeah. Way, oh, <laughs> way more mass on that side. All right, well, the first thing I seen was just this. Yeah. I was like, ooh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, he, he, oh, he looks kind of old there. Yeah, he's not a young deer. No, he can't be. There's nothing. He's not hooky either though. No. He's got great brows even. Yeah. <laughs> all them freaking points. He, he busted off a big point too. Yeah, I know. This, what, this point right here was out to here. Yeah, that was a big long stick. Yeah, it was. So he's been fighting. I don't know if that would be a second, like, almost looks like a second beam. But, but I mean, how do you, that, that's cool in its own, right? Like that's super cool, right? Yeah, so I, I seen two deer in the stand earlier in the morning. They were behind me in the spruce. I couldn't really see what they were. And then it was pretty quiet. And then right around noon or 11.30, heard a crash and I look up and this guy was coming right out of these spruce trees here, heading right towards me pretty well. So scrambled to get the camera on him. I think he might've seen me a little bit. I'm not too sure. Ended up getting the camera on him because last year I didn't get to get the kill shot. So I had to make darn sure I got the kill shot this year. <laughs> but anyways, he come out and I stopped him 
put a good shot on him. He only ran about 40 yards and as soon as he came out of the spruce trees and I seen this, I knew exactly what deer he was. I didn't even have to put my binoculars up or nothing. Just got the camera on him and dropped him. He didn't go very far either, so I'm super happy. This is pretty much my target deer. of One of three target deer anyways, but this is by far the coolest one. And I'm super happy I ended up shooting this one. So, but let's get him out here and get some pictures and stuff before he stiffens up and get him out of here. And I want to get some pictures with Sydney too. That's number one priority before it gets dark. I want to have my daughter right here with me too. So that's next. If I would have sitting here last year, like I missed all the deer came for on this side of the spruce trees, they're going back and forth. Yeah. So they, and the, I see them, they were on this scrape here. I couldn't shoot them from there. Mm. They, were, when they went past the scrape. Mm. I missed all those deer. So I would, they were walked right in front of me at 40 yards yeah. last year. And I would have killed my deer. My deer I shot last year was on this side until he went all the way back around in the swamp. Then he came out of the swamp. Yeah. 